What's up, people? I am actually at home right now. And so I just got home. I've been out for five weeks. That's longer than normal. Um, and I'm sending out my last empty call. It's actually, I got home last night, uh, but I forgot to send my empty call, which means the trailer is empty and we're unloaded. Um, I delivered in St. Paul's, North Carolina yesterday. That's actually where my mom lives. So after I delivered, I parked at the truck stop and visited my mom. She made me a steak dinner. <laughs> uh, but now I got to send in my, my last bit of paperwork. Where the heck is my bill of lading up? There we go. Okay. So I figured, you know, while I'm doing this, I'll talk. Um, I've been at Crete for slightly over a month. Um, I've been with Crete for 30, this is the 33rd day that I've been with Crete. So a little bit over a month. Um, I say I've been out for five weeks because I was out for a week with Blue Max. And then I switched to Crete. So I haven't even been home. This is the first time I've been home other than to stop for two hours and grab my stuff. Um, so I'll be here till the weekend. Uh, I figured since I've been here for a, a, a month, then I could talk about what it's been like. 7,176. After I send in my empty call. Uh, my last load was only 7,000 pounds. Crazy. I felt like I was going to fly off the road. That's another thing. I'll talk about the kind of loads we get here too. What is my odometer reading? Let's, uh, can I, what do I, how do I, how do I turn this on? I, I didn't keep up with my miles. Oh my God. I was supposed to keep up with my miles. I gotta get paid. I'll talk about how, uh, not exactly how the month's been because I've been giving updates anyway. Uh, 157.981. Um, I have put about, oh, pretty much 15,000 miles on this thing. Let's see, it was 144. 13. Oh, yeah, almost 14,000 miles. Almost 14,000 miles. Um, I'll talk about, you know, how Crete is now in 2020. And I think that would be a decent topic for a video. Now, I've rambled for two and a half minutes. Uh, my trailer, two, three. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, now that's done. Sweet. So, I've got my work done. Now, I can talk. I keep my bill of ladings, bills of lading, all the ones that I've done so far in this little envelope. I fold them up and I put them in here and I keep them. I don't throw them away or I don't keep them disorganized. That way if they need them later, then I've got quick access to them. And I feel like that is smart of me. Because <laughs> eventually somebody's going to be like, we need this bill from whatever day. <laughs> All right, so I got a, I made a little bit of a list. I don't know. I like the lists. I do the list every once in a while. Um, um, just basic stuff about Crete and how it is in 2020. I don't, you know, I figure there might be older videos. I don't know if there's a 2020 one. Um, but I'm a new, -ish, no, I'm a new driver at Crete, so fresh perspective uh, is always good. I'm not giving a review. I like the company. We'll say that. I like the company. And I feel it's a company I could be at for a while. Good enough, right? So anyway, first I'll talk about the truck. Uh, my truck, in general. Uh, it had 144,000 miles on it when I got it, so it was uh, gently used. It is apparently a 2020. Somebody said it was a 2020 because it's got the fancy of fading lights and all that. Um, and the, the 19s didn't have that. So this is apparently a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia. It's a good truck. It's um, it's it's pretty much about the same thing as what I drove at uh, CR England. Slightly nicer, but I drove a, a, a Cascadia at CR England. Uh, this is the same thing. The, um, the gear shifters are up basically like the it's a stock off the steering wheel. It's not like a shifter over here. And in the Mac, I had a little touch button up here. Um, so they're all different, it feels like. Um, I don't remember how the International was, but uh, I drove an International at CR England. I have not driven one here. Um, Crete has Freightliner Cascadias, Kenworth T680s, and 
international something somethings. I don't know what they're called. They're just, they're the international truck. <laughs> uh, I, I've driven all three of those trucks. They're all decent. I'm not a huge fan of the, the international. The Kenworth, I think, is the best truck we have, but the pack car transmission is a little bit janky sometimes, honestly. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, I, uh... I think the Freightliner is a pretty straight truck. You know, I, I, a lot of people talk crap about Freightliners, but it's a straight. I, I, I like I like the truck. Uh, it's a little bit rough. It's a rougher ride. I don't think the suspension's as good as my Mac was. Nothing was as good as the Mac. That was a smooth truck. This thing, sometimes you feel like you're going off road. <laughs> it's got the air ride. Air. Okay, I don't really have air in my truck at the moment. Um, but sometimes you'll hit a bump and the air ride on the, the seat will slam you all the way down. Yeah, that's fun. My back kind of hurts after driving through Oklahoma, Arkansas, and then Ohio and Pennsylvania. Those roads, oh my God. I drove, Indiana, Indiana, that's it. I drove back and forth across those roads for like a week, done. I'm, my back is over, I'm going to the chiropractor. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, I'm going tomorrow. Ugh. All right, that's enough about the trucks. Uh, the Opti Idol in the trucks. It's a little weird. I'm not really a huge fan of it. I get why it's there. It's to save fuel costs, and it does save money, and it saves wear and tear on the truck. So we can't idle. I don't know the temperatures. There's a low temperature and a high temperature max that we can idle. So if it's really cold outside, I think it'll just idle. I'm not completely sure. Um, I've already got my little lock. So, uh, basically, you can turn the truck on, and then you'll set the Opti idle, uh, and it basically turns the truck into a giant APU that will sense when it's too cold or if the battery's about to run out, and it'll cut itself on to charge the battery up or warm you up. That's pretty much it. I don't know how that's going to work in the summer. And if I'm straight up, if it doesn't idle, if it doesn't idle and keep me cool in the summer at night, I can't sleep and I can't sleep hot. So <laughs> this thing's idling at night. I, I sorry, it's 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 done okay in the winter. Sometimes it, it won't cut itself on or keep itself warm when it's like 20 degrees outside and it thinks it's warmer. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> uh, but whatever. The bed in this, it's a, it's a decently comfortable bed, but underneath, uh, obviously, where all your, your storage is for the truck. And it goes all the way through. It's just a big compartment, and it's not insulated. So you've got cold air under the bed. So the bed's kind of cold. I've been trying to figure out a way to fix that. That's not going to be a, a problem much longer because it's March. But, you know, whatever. That's the out the idle. Uh, all trucks have uh, adaptive cruise control. Same as most of these company trucks, you know, it, it, uh, it'll sense if there's something in front of you. It'll slow you down if it needs to. It'll cut the jake brake on if it needs to. When you're cresting a hill, it'll slow itself down a little so you don't go over the hill too fast. I don't like that. I, if I'm in a really hilly area or in the mountains, I do not use cruise, cruise control. I, I don't like not being in control of the truck. I, I, I like to... I like to know what I'm doing. I'm not. I don't trust automated systems when I'm in the mountains or the hills. <laughs> so uh, I do it. But it's it'll keep you going. You know, it, it's slower. It's a lot slower. You know, I, I I keep. I think my speed limit is probably around 60 instead of 65 usually, if I'm on that. Which I I suppose is better on gas. But you know, I, I still get like nine to ten miles a gallon. Uh, on in this even with a heavy load so um very different from flatbed i was getting like six usually because there's drag on everything um there's no lane departure system which is amazing i love it i love that there's no lane departure system in this thing that's when you're you're going over a line uh and you don't have the turn signal on uh so it's there to let you know if you're crossing a line on accident cool i don't really do that on accident when I cross the line, it's on purpose, especially in a construction zone where they've got half the road closed off and you got to ride the line. My last truck was constant. Shut up. 
drove me nuts. Like it would literally just instill rage in me immediately. This truck doesn't do that. It doesn't yell at you. <laughs> so good on you, Creek, for not doing that. That thing is so annoying. Please never do that. Um, our terminals. I haven't been to all the terminals. We've got a good bit of terminals. Actually, I'll tell you where they all are. There's a list. Oh, there's a big list. So we got one in West Memphis, Arkansas. So Memphis. I didn't know that. <laughs> I could have stopped there. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. That's cool because I want to move to Arizona. Um, I was thinking about Phoenix. So that might be my home terminal eventually. Uh, Dillon, Florida, which is Central Florida, I think. Marietta, Georgia. Basically Atlanta. Indianapolis, Lafayette. So they're right there together. Um, Indianapolis is obviously Indiana, and Lafayette, Indiana. They're close together. Kansas City, Missouri. I could have stopped there, too. I've been to the Lincoln, Nebraska terminal. Oh, I've been to the Marietta terminal. Um, it's actually a nice terminal, uh, but it was it was like the weekend, so they were like there was nobody there. But there's it's a decent-sized lot. You could find somewhere to park. Um, Lincoln, Nebraska, that's the biggest terminal. I think that's the headquarters terminal. Uh, it's nice. I didn't go in the main building because they have all the drivers cordoned off to like the maintenance area and that's where your driver shop and all that is. <laughs> I guess because we stink. I don't know. We don't shower. <laughs> I shower. I don't know about you. But uh, yeah, Lincoln, Nebraska terminal is pretty nice. It's got a, a, a truck stop like a couple blocks away that has this really nice restaurant in there. It's really, really good. I can't remember the name of it, but it's super good. Um, and it's got a bunch of cool little gift stuff. Um, and they even have CBD, like, back rub. We can't take CBD oil. That's risky. And uh, we, can't, we can't have that in a truck. I'm not sure about CBD oil or back rub in the truck. But that's supposed to be, like, better than Tiger Balm. <laughs> so I wanted some. It was expensive. I'm going to stop talking about the truck stop. I'm talking about Creek. Omaha, Nebraska is the other one. Uh, we got one in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's my home ter home terminal, but I haven't even been there. I have not been to that one. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, I've been to. It's tiny. It is a tiny, tiny place with a lot of trucks and trailers. There's no room. <laughs> it, it's it's bad. I don't, I'm not saying the terminal's bad. I didn't even go in the terminal. I was just in the lot, but it was tiny. No room. It took me a, a while to get back in, and I can get into some tight spots, but... Uh, I would say that one needs a little more room. <laughs> That's probably the case with a couple of these. I haven't been to all of them. Uh, uh, that, was, that was Columbus. So Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've been there. That's basically a strip mall that we took over. <laughs> so there was a strip mall that's like closed down, but a lot of different companies have taken over uh, and put their businesses in the old spots. And Crete has a spot in there. They have showers, they've got bathrooms, but it closes at night. And we just basically park in the parking lot. I ordered Domino's and had them deliver. Straight, right? Um, but it's open. You know, it's a place to park in Tulsa. And there's not a lot of places to park in Tulsa. So it was good. Uh, Mechanicsburg, PA. Haven't been there. Um, I think that's near, like, Carlisle area. Not too sure. Lenmore City, Tennessee. That's where I did my orientation. That's a huge place it's got a huge lot i think that's where they sell a lot of the trucks um but it's big and it's a pretty nice terminal too um i honestly think it's nicer than the headquarters terminal <laughs> um let's see wilmer texas which is basically dallas i started to go there but it was a little bit out of the way so i didn't bother and plus it's dallas it's like right in dallas <laughs> Um, North Salt Lake, Utah. I would love to go there, Crete. Send me to Utah. I miss Utah. Send me to the Rockies all you want. You sent me to Denver. I was very happy about that. I took that load and gave up being home on time for my birthday to go to Denver. I love the Rockies. Send me. Send me to the Rockies. I love them. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Don't send me there. <laughs> Screw that place. Ah, I hate Wyoming. Well, I, I like West Wyoming, but Cheyenne is no. No, sir. That one's not fun. Cheyenne's where our Walmart drivers are. Uh, they're like all contracted out to deliver to Walmarts. They're the only terminal, uh, only fleet that's required to drive with chains on. All the other ones, we have to have chains because we go through places that have chain restrictions. But 
we're not required to chain up and drive. We can stop if we want or if we're not comfortable or if it's just too bad. Uh, Cheyenne Fleet is required to drive with chains on because they deliver to Walmarts and Walmarts need their stuff. So keep that in mind if you're going to be in that kind of fleet if you live around there. Um, but Crete's really good about, hey, you know, if you look at the roads and they're a little bit crazy and you don't want to drive on them, Crete won't argue with you. They'll just say, cool, go ahead and park, you know, go when you can. Um, I haven't had to stop for weather except once, but I only had to stop for like an hour. I was headed into Denver. And uh, I had a light load, it was like 20,000 pounds, and the wind was picking up, it was like 30 miles an hour. I should stop if I have, like, I think it's like under 20,000 pounds. If it's 30 miles an hour, you need to stop with, with this kind of trailer. It was 30 and I had a 27,000 pound load, something like that, so, you know, kind of light. And it wasn't moving my trailer, it was definitely blowing my truck, and I was having to, you know, jank the steering wheel a, f a few times, but it wasn't gusting, it was just plain wind at 30 miles an hour. Then it picked up to 40. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna stop. And it started snowing too, like you know, blizzard out of nowhere. Uh, this was right outside Denver. So I stopped at the Flying J and I went and I had an IHOP. <laughs> and I came back out and it cleared out. The wind died down. Cool, jumped back on the road and drove into Denver and a blizzard happened again on the way there. <laughs> I had nowhere to stop, <laughs> nowhere to stop. Uh, they, high, they stress very, very heavily, do not stop on the shoulder of the road unless it's an emergency. So I didn't stop on the shoulder of the road. I drove through that stuff at like 40 miles an hour on a 70 uh, mile per hour road. There were trucks and ditches, all of them local guys, because y'all can't, y'all don't know how to drive safely, man. Local drivers are crazy people. I, if I ever get cut off by a truck, it's a local driver. I'll never take that back. You guys suck. <laughs> I'm not talking about Korean. I'm talking about pre-plan, pre pre-plan. Wait. Where's this from? Is this on the Oh, I already got my pre-plan. That's one of my next topics. Cool. Best diamond. Ooh, look at you, fancy. Michigan. Oh, it's gonna be cold. Okay, all right, stop talking. So, uh, that was the safety. So dispatch, how is dispatch? Um, normal day dispatch, my dispatcher, we call them asset managers. Um, I think that's just an overly complicated term, honestly. That's like with the Army. It, you know, this is specialized writing utensil. Asset managers. They're dispatchers. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we've got. So dispatch during the day, your normal dispatchers, if you drive during the day. Uh, highly communicative. Um, sometimes you'll talk to different ones, but you'll have your main one that will they'll get everything settled up for you. And mine's mine's pretty on point. He had he, he always has my pre plans ready the day before, um, so I know where I'm going. And then as soon as I send my empty call, boom, I've got a message for my uh, my uh, load info. Like just now, I sent my empty call like what ten minutes ago. I'm not even going back on duty for another two days. And I just got a pre-plan, so I know where I'm gonna be as soon as I get in this truck. I love it. That happened on camera. Good stuff. All right. So um, that's the daytime dispatch. They're pretty straight. Nighttime dispatch, you could expect to be a little slower because it's nighttime. They're dealing with everybody that drives at night, and there's obviously less of them. Um, so it, they're a little slower. Uh, and the weekend dispatch is the same way. I think it's the same people. I'm not really sure. I don't know, but that, that's the only times I've had to wait. But I don't really drive at night much. I don't really like driving at night. I like to see where I'm going. I like to see the cities. I like to uh, see the mountains and the views. You know, that's more relaxing to me. I can deal with the traffic to see that. I don't like driving at night, especially if it's raining. Because whoever decided to make all the roads shiny, all these new roads just shiny when it's raining, you're an idiot. You need to be shot. Okay, I'm gonna stop ranting about that because I'm getting mad. Shiny. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how is home time so I'm home now I've been out for five weeks one week with the other company I've been out four with Crete typically all the over the road drivers uh, we are out three weeks and they will automatically start sending you home after the third week automatically you don't even have to request it they just send you home for three days um, so if you just want to be out three weeks and go home cool do it you can request to extend that. They will send you a message that says, hey, you've been out 21 days. Uh, we're gonna start sending you home. Um, in the next few next few loads, we'll send you home. 
And you can either accept that and go home, or you can reply to that message and tell them what date you'd rather go home. Uh, I am unsure if the date you send them is the day you want to be home, or if it's the date you want to start going towards home. <laughs> I'll have to clear that up, because I actually have to be home on March 31st. So I'll be out another month. I have to be home to dog sit, because uh, everybody in the house is going out of town. So I have to be here to uh, babysit the dog. Uh, it's the dog I had with me on my last truck with Milton. Now, he's a cool dog. He likes to walk. He's not like people. All right, enough about the dog. So home time straight. I imagine like regional and dedicated get home every weekend. So pre-plans. I just got my pre-plan, you know, before I even needed to get a load. Uh, so I, I very, very, very rarely wait uh, more than a few minutes for a pre-plan. Not a pre-plan. Pre-plan comes in the day before I deliver usually. Sometimes I'll have two pre-plans, so I'll know where I'm going twice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's I like that. I like that a lot. And then um 20%. Damn, I need to finish this up. So oh wait, I can plug my shit in. My phone's about to die. Not now. Plugged in, buddy. So uh you'll get the pre-plan a day a day early, usually, maybe a couple days early, and then as soon as you send your empty call, once you're empty, you'll typically right then get your uh, load info within um, like a minute or two. I've had to wait about 30 or 40 minutes for that on the weekend and at night. Um, so I have to prepare for that. I even had to wait one time when I was I was dropping off uh, at a facility and also picking up at that facility. That's where we ran into a weird issue. Um, there's two sides of this coin. So I had that kind of issue at night uh, on a weekend and I was dropping off and delivering no, delivering and pick, or, yeah, delivering and picking up at the same place. I had to send my empty call before I could get my load info. But I was right there at the guard shack, and they were like, "What's your load info? I can just give that to you, and you can pick up the trailer you're picking up." And I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> Nobody would tell me. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of anybody." But then, you know, a few days later, I did the same thing. I was dropping off and picking up at the same place, and I knew I was doing that. And I, I called in. I was like, "Hey, uh, this was daytime." can I get my load info for the next thing so I can just pick it all up at once? And then they gave it to me. Um, the dispatcher that day kind of joked with me. She's like, if I tell you that, I have to kill you. Ha! Just give me the load info. <laughs> but they're lighthearted. They, they joke. It's funny. Um, they're good dispatchers. I like the dispatch, basically. Um, I was talking about home time, right? Yeah, I went back on dispatch. Uh, Pre-plans I already talked about. Load types. What kind of loads do we get? Um... It'll be anywhere from what, what I said. I, I've had a 2,000 pound load with this place before. Um, didn't even see what it was. It was just already sealed. Um, most of my loads are drop and hook. It's glorious. I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm never going back to flatbed. I'm never doing anything <laughs> that requires me to load. I love drop and hook. All right. Every once in a while, you'll have a live load or unload uh, and have to wait. Typically, that'll take a couple hours, like an hour and a half to two hours. Um, that's a normal wait time, um, but that's that, that's probably only like 25% of the time. 75% of my loads are drop and hook, and I think where I'm going next um, looks like I am going to have to get loaded. So, early pickup, 10 o'clock. Meh. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting loaded and unloaded, so I don't think this is going to be any kind of drop and hook anything, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Not too bad, right? <clears throat> um, but what, the kind of stuff we get, you know, anywhere from food to car parts, uh, cat litter and cat food. Um, if you're refrigerated, I'm not too sure. I would imagine the same kind of stuff, except it just has to be cold, right? <laughs> I don't know. It, the, the kind of stuff doesn't matter. Um, the cat food loads and cat litter, bagged stuff, will bow your trailer out. So you actually have to look at that. If it bows out too much, you can get an oversized violation at the, at the scale place. I didn't get one, but I, it's, I've definitely picked up some loads that were kind of bowed out a little bit. I think it's like a certain amount of inches. Um, but you have to watch that and, uh, and let them know if it's too much, if it's bowed out too much. Um, your... 
not your load locks. We have load locks in the truck for the trailer for the loads in the trailers. We have two on the truck. Every once in a while, you'll have to swap those out, um, but you don't you don't have to pay for those. Um, but we do have like trailer door locks. They're like this what we call enforcer door locks. It's this big giant lock that slides, and we put it on the trailer bars or the door bars, and it locks the trailer. We also have a kingpin lock if you need to drop your trailer somewhere uh, that's not secured. You do pay for those. I think it's like $130 for a used set, $175 for a new set. I got a used set. We have to pay for them. They don't make you pay for it all at once. They take it out in installments over, I think, like six checks or something like that. Um, so it's barely noticeable. Um, but they're not just charging you for something you're not going to keep. If you leave Crete, you can keep it. Uh, if you turn them back in you will get paid back for them when you leave Crete. so they're not just taking your money i left my last company because they were taking my money Crete isn't taking your money so that's good <coughs> uh 26 minutes dang all right so that's load lock so you you pay for them but you're paying installments blah 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 area of operations so since you're only out for three weeks and they automatically schedule to go home, I don't think I'm going to be away from the eastern side of the country or the Midwest too much. Uh, I like that they sent me to Denver. I'm hoping they'll send me more, you know, Utah, Arizona, California, Washington, Oregon. I want to go. That's why I went to an overroad company so I could go back out there again because I hate this side of the country. I can't stand it. <coughs> but this is probably where I'm going to be at the most because you're only out for like three weeks and then you go home. So I think they keep you fairly close to where you live. Um, and that's everywhere. If you live in Phoenix, they're gonna, probably going to keep you in the southwest the most. Um, but I'm hoping I get to go out west, you know, at least once a month. I'd be happy with that. Um, the benefits are, oh, they're okay. They're, they're, they're good for a trucking company. I think all trucking companies have crappy benefits, honestly. And I, I'm a little bit biased. I work for Corning and I work for Verizon, um, both huge corporations. Uh, both had really good benefits. So trucking companies don't hold a candle to those, sorry. But Crete has some pretty good, it's probably the, the best benefits I've seen in a trucking company that I've worked for. Um, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. I don't remember all of the numbers and whatnot, but it was pretty good. Uh, you have to sign up within 31 days of your hire date. I got hired on January 31st. I tried calling. I could never get them on their hours. It's the only thing I don't like about Crete. Right here. They make you call. They make you call in during Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time or something like that. I was never either thinking about it or I just didn't have time to call because it's going to take me 30 or 40 minutes to call these people and get on a computer, on a laptop, in the truck, to sign up. Yeah, I've got to use my hotspot off of my tablet or my phone to sign up on a website, I guess, that they wouldn't just give me in the first place to sign up for benefits. So long story short, I didn't get signed up for benefits. I tried, and people tried to get into the system to sign me up, but it had already locked me out because it was like the 31st day. It sucks. It sucks. So I don't have benefits with Crete right now. So make sure you have a planned time to sign up for this stuff. I should have been proactive and signed up for it the day I got hired and went to the hotel that night. But I didn't because I'm an idiot. Don't make my mistake. Now I got to go on the Obamacare site and see if I can sign up there for something so I can get um, blood pressure medicine cheaper. We do have physicians at all the terminals apparently. So I'm going to try to get into a terminal as soon as I can and try to see a physician, see if I can get a prescription for blood pressure medicine and pick it up that way. I'm pretty sure I can do that. Uh, they will do your DOT physicals at the terminals too, so that's cool. Oh, I wish they had a chiropractor. That'd be kind of cool. My back really hurts. It's like I kind of kink right under my left shoulder blade. It sucks. Going, going tomorrow. Uh, so Blue Beacon, that's the last thing I'll talk about. Blue Beacon is authorized for us every 45 days uh, my truck was grimy and dirty when I got it it was gross I finally got it washed in Pennsylvania um, sat there for like 45 minutes waiting to get it washed it was nice nice and clean now obviously Pennsylvania salts their roads and the next morning it started raining and I had to drive through it 
and my road, my truck was all white and chalky the, the very next morning. I was very angry. It's clean now because while I was waiting to unload in St. Paul's, I got out there with some cleaning wipes and some terry towels, and I hand washed my truck because I can't stand having a dirty truck. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm like that. My truck's clean now. Thanks, Pennsylvania. Douche. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. It's Crete's been straight uh, the whole month. Uh, I imagine it's going to keep being cool and, and be a good company because everybody says Crete's a good company. Um, my uh, my grandma remarried uh, to a guy that drove a truck for 20 years. I don't really know who he drove for, but once he heard I drove for Crete, uh, his eyes kind of lit up. He's like, oh, they're a good company. They've been a good company for a long time. I'm like, yeah, I heard. <laughs> so Crete's good, basically. Uh, but that's how Crete is in 2020. Probably not very different. Um, but, uh, I think I could be here for a while and they got enough terminals for me to jump around if I move. Okay, cool. Just mount 